Hello there, I'm Ryan. Welcome back to All Mine Ranch and Solo Homesteader Channel. It's a beautiful Saturday morning, a little cold, but I've been working already for about an hour, so I'm warmed up. So it's a three day weekend because Monday is, what, President's Day? So I got Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and for winter, man, we got some great weather. It's gonna be 70, 71, sunny, reasonable breeze, basically absolutely perfect weather. So I've got to be, I want to be super productive. All right, so it's laundry weekend for one. Time to pull the sheets off my bed, do all my laundry, get that done. It's, you know, when I don't like to do laundry when it's cold or damp or not sunny, but since it's gonna be pretty dry and sunny all weekend, it's a good time to uh, do my wash and hang it on the line to dry. I'm gonna do a dump run, obviously, since I just uh, started putting debris in my truck. The dump is open till about two o'clock, and since I'm already started, and I need bird seed too. Oh, let me tell you about the birds, they're funny. You know, for the last few months, most mornings, I get up early, I try to sit and meditate and breathe and center and ground and work on my intentions for the day and just basically get based. But then I usually get up and go outside and I say, hello birds, and they've all started to come in now. Um, and I put out bird seed for them. But they're getting a little aggressive about it. <laughs> if I don't go out there and put out bird seed, they're starting to come to my glass front door and there's a little ledge for the glass, like a frame around the glass. They'll land on that little ledge and just stare into my house. Like, and I'm only a few feet away sitting on my little couch and they're saying, in bird language, Ryan, come out and put out the seed, you idiot. But I'm totally out. I've gone through a five pound bucket of bird seed. So I need to go hit the hardware store too. So my point is I'm going to go out on my land, start getting some of the brush piles that I've been accumulating for the last two years um, and fill the entire back of my truck with brush because it's fine that it's out on the land, but if we do get a fire, when we get a fire, which is an eventuality, that's just more fuel for the fire. And I don't want any of those brush piles, I don't know, I just don't want them getting out of control. So I'm gonna haul brush to the dump, hit the Ace Hardware. It was my birthday two weeks ago, they sent me a $5 off anything uh, coupon. So I'm gonna go buy some bird seed, use my $5 off coupon before it expires, and then come back and do laundry, but my big projects for the weekend is working on solar array number two. I've got the big 16 footer boards inside the house here on the other side of this wall. They're set up on sawhorses and I painted one side of them red. I've got to paint the other side and let that dry. Then I can take them out and start mounting them. I already did a little notch for because I've worked out a, a better system for how those things mount to the building. And I'll show you that when we get to that stage. So solar array uh, and my pump house, continuing to work on my pump house, <clears throat> um, the layout, insulation, siding, um, 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 I don't know, and a million other random projects. I've got so many projects going on, it's not even funny. So don't know exactly what I'm going to work on, but it's going to be whatever I feel like working on. And I do have to pace myself because if I don't pace myself, I will hit exhaustion about 2 p.m. and the days are getting a little longer. It's staying light now till 6 p.m., maybe a few minutes after, 6.30. Um, and I like to work until I can't work anymore. But if I kill myself too early in the day, I won't be able to do it. Because like I said, I had a birthday. I'm now 53 and my stamina, even though I work hard as a dog compared to most people, my stamina is not what it was when I was 25, 30, 35. So I have to pace myself a little bit, take more breaks, take, you know, a reasonable lunch. Just let everything, you know, settle and then go back out and just, you know, slow and steady wins the race, right? Okay, let's see what I do next. Probably gonna go out on the land and load up about 50 Gorilla Carts worth of brush. And I have to wear gloves and eye protection because that brush will absolutely gouge you in the eye, scratch the shit out of your face, etc. cetera. Um, everything's thorny out here in the desert. And even though it's kind of broken up a little bit, it'll definitely get you if you're not really paying attention and wearing your safety gear. So let's go do that. I'm walking my trails though and pointing out some debris. So here's another little station along my trails where I found a big ass bolt and nut all rusted out and sheared off and a couple of hinges. And I like to just take this old rusty stuff 
if it's visually interesting and just line the trail with it. There's something, I don't know what that is. Oh, here's the Heinz ketchup bottle. I haven't cleaned it up yet, but I found this old bottle on the land a couple weeks ago and I looked up the design and I think they call it a keg o ketchup 1970. So if you want to Google keg o ketchup, I think that's what it is. Old Heinz ketchup bottle. And then I got like a little rake head here. And here's some other stuff. Old pliers, a knife, some kind of hardware, a bunch of old massive rusty ass nails, a uh, metal javelina, that's actually mine, I bought that. Some more hinges, and here's a railroad spike, a couple of them, and some chain, and another nut and bolt sheared off. So, when I come across stuff like that, I like to just set it out, and eventually I might trash it or get rid of it. But it's kind of fun just to see how I can line the trail with interesting debris like those things. Hubcaps, hubcap caps maybe, I don't know what those are. Had a lot of cow activity lately. They're stomping everything. Here's some more car stuff. It's an old radio. This is says uh, that's an old Ford radio display, and it's not plastic. It's heavy ass metal that weighs about a half pound, and it's just the faceplate from an old AM radio. And then this, I think, was part of a rear view mirror. Kind of cool. And on and on, <laughs> I got that kind of stuff all over my trails. But anyway, here's my massive brush pile. This thing's been building but shrinking, building and shrinking because of decay. Um, it's about four feet high, three or four feet high, and pretty good size. And now, you can see there's my tiny house. So it's fairly close in. So I want to get rid of it. So that's what I think I'm going to do. Bring the gorilla cart over here, just start loading up that pile, bring it around to my truck, dump it in the bed. It's probably going to take about 10 trips. Making progress. I put a dent in it. Maybe six, seven more loads, but I don't think my truck will hold that much, so I have to stop here at some point soon. I think I have one load. I can go one more load higher before I have to call it good and head to the dump. 
Yeah, that gets the heart rate up for sure, stomping on all that stuff. Okay, that was some hard work. Truck is about as full as I can get it. I stomped on it five or six times. I think I got about seven or eight loads in there. I'm exhausted. Stomping on brush to compact it down is actually exhausting work. Oh yeah, dang. I'm gonna cool down for a couple minutes, have some water, maybe grab some road food, food not for the road. A Danish, by the way, I'm off my keto diet and I have been since Christmas or December. So December, January, February, I've been off my keto diet and I've been going crazy on the Danish and day old bakery racket, Safeway. And I probably put on 12 pounds again. It's coming back. So I wish I could find balance with my diet. I tend to go to extremes. I was extreme keto for six, seven, eight months, lost 30 pounds. Decided it's the holidays, I'm gonna get off it and just enjoy eating whatever I want, but the eating whatever I want's kinda of gotten out of hand. So I need to get back on it here shortly. I said my birthday, but now my birthday is coming past and I'm still buying Danishes. But soon, soon I'm gonna go back on it and lose some of this weight again. But it has filled out my face a little bit. I don't look so gaunt, right? Don't look maybe so old? Yeah, I still look old, but maybe not so gaunt. Um, so that's one positive benefit of getting fat. But I prefer to be thin and gaunt than fat and... Okay, I just made it back from the dump. Got rid of all that brush. It was hard work and you know, a weird thing happened. As I was by hand, I had gloves on, but by hand pulling all that stuff out of my truck, the dust was sort of kicking up and my left eye started to really burn and I thought, is someone here dumping friggin' onions in the dump? And uh, you know, I just had to work through it and it lingered for about 20 minutes and only my left, not my right. And it wasn't like something in there. It was more like just straight up irritation, almost like from chemicals, but I never wiped my eye. I think it was just the dust that was in all that brush. So it's gone now. I put in some Visine, you know, just to help out. That was kind of weird. Then I went to Ace Hardware and got a couple kinds of bird seed and then while I was there, I got a bunch of fat washers. After I bought them for 37 cents each, I realized I could have just drilled some hole in some damn nickels and saved myself a few bucks. Would have been some effort, but would have saved a few bucks. What do I need washers for? Great question. Well, I mentioned in a previous clip, I don't know if it'll make it into the video or if it ends up on the uh, cutting room floor, so to speak. But I talked about making a giant furniture dolly for all of this insulation. So I think I'm going to do it. I mean, I'll, I have, and you can see it down here. So I have four of these metal casters. I got some scrap two by fours that are bowed and otherwise not great uh, two by fours. And I'm just going to make about uh, two five foot long two by fours and then connect them uh, with a cross brace that's maybe three feet wide and that'll give me a rollable platform and then I can load up all of this insulation behind me, in front of me, behind you, uh, onto it, this big pile, and then I'll be able to move it around inside this space so that I can get it out of my way when I need to work on things because I'm very rapidly approaching, whoops, I'm very rapidly approaching the phase of this um, homestead project where I've got to reframe the walls, rework on the floor, and basically get ready, you know, just, I don't even know what the term is, finish building it out. So that's what, it may be take me 10 minutes, so I'm gonna do that right now and let's see how it works out. Oh, and the washers are for, let me show you. These casters have pretty big holes and all of the screws that I have, the wood screws would go right through the hole. So I'm just gonna put the uh, wood screws through this, that's gonna go on there, and that's how I'm gonna fasten it to the two by fours. And like I said, could have, could have made that out of nickels with a good drill bit and a drill press. And nickels, I could have made my own washers, deface some government money, 
worthless fiat currency. By the way, this morning, Bitcoin took a small dip down to 51000 I bought $50 more because I'm a Bitcoiner and everyone ought to be a Bitcoiner. You guys don't even know. I keep telling you, but no one's listening. I hope you're listening. Buy Bitcoin. Need another cross brace. Not perfect, but it'll work. Especially once I add one more cross brace. Doesn't exactly roll like a skateboard. It, you know, it's a little clunky, but it'll work. And I had those metal casters laying around for years. I think I need to put a little uh, three in one oil or WD-40 on them. They don't swivel all that easily. But yeah, giant furniture dolly for all those four by eight sheets. All right, okay, let's see if it works. See if the idea has merit. I'm not moving that way. Well, not the easiest in the world to roll. I never did grease the wheels or oil them. But it works. I can move it around without having to restack the entire stack. So that's cool. We'll call that a win. Okay, well now that I got that stack taken care of, let's pick up where we left off yesterday. Um, I decided yesterday afternoon my back was really sore from all the uh, landscaping and brush work that I did. I decided to paint this thing. For some reason, I don't know what, what I was thinking, I had originally painted this top part yellow, but the whole body of this is yellow or going to be yellow. Door's not done yet, but I did... Sorry, it's super bright out here. Oh, I'm blind, I'm blind. I did this side. But I got to go back and basically paint the top red so that it matches my color scheme everywhere else. Like over here, main walls are yellow, trim is red. So I ran out of paint So right as I was hitting a stopping point late in the day. So I didn't do the door. So I'm going to get some yellow paint. I'm going to go back. I'm going to do the door and, and touch it up, let that dry. Then I'm going to grab the red paint, red paint. Then I'm going to grab the red paint and do the trim. And then that thing will be visually a little nicer than it was. And then if my plan holds true, it doesn't always, I'm going to go work on that bad boy. You can see I've got the wood right here for it, but the solar ray needs some attention. Today's great weather for it. And then my other main goal for the weekend, I didn't really talk about my general goals. But my to-do list involves finishing the trim on this solar array that is unpainted and not fully done. And there's also, I didn't share with you guys, but we got a storm about two weeks ago. And where that unpainted panel is, wind got in and lifted out the bottom right two solar panels and actually lifted them right out of the frame. I came out and they were laying on the ground. Or one of them was laying on the ground, the other had moved down. So... I hastily put up, you know, some blocking panel, but it's not cut right. It's the wrong, that's the back side of it. It's unpainted, etc. So I got to take that off and then uh, paint that. There's also a section along the top that's not painted, plus the 
yeah there's some support bracing that i have to do so basically it's a solar array carpentry day plus painting and that's pretty much going to hold true for uh the rest of today and pretty much all of tomorrow and all of tomorrow which will be president's day so i have the day off of work so it's not very exciting the painting Yes, I could set up the camera right here and then paint behind me, but do you really want to watch me paint? I bet you do not. So, but next time you see this, that trim across the top there will be red. All right, so I got this painted up mostly. I have to mess with the hinges though. I took off one hinge and painted there. The other two, whoops, are still on there. And I don't want to get yellow paint on my black hinges, so I'm just taking them off, painting behind them, letting it dry, putting the hinge back up. But as you can see, it's a little rough. But this side is yellow. I got the trim is red. Sorry, coming over here. Trim is red along here. I might do some red around the door frame, and I'm probably going to take some trim pieces and put them up along the corners, and those will also be red, so I think it'll look a little better. But I'm getting there. At least it's got a good coat of paint on it for now to protect it from, to protect it from the elements. <laughs> took me a while to finish the sentence. Uh, that took me about an hour, by the way, to do that shed. Um, anyway, now I think I'm going to start working on the solar rack. And I haven't figured out, it's hard to describe, but I've got to figure out how to do these big supports coming down. Um, measure them. I have to keep everything parallel, square, the right width, while one corner is fixed and the other corner is floating and needs to be established in cement. So how you get the post in the right place in cement such that the boards coming down can attach to it perfectly and keep the right widths is a little bit of a challenge. So I'll uh, take you out there in a minute and show you what the heck I'm talking about. Correction to the next activity. I think what I'm gonna work on next is finishing up this paneling right here you can see i just have a temporary panel right there that runs long and it's runs long and it's the wrong side so i've got to uh swap that out for the right piece cut it to shape paint it get it mounted but at least with a few screws that's a wind wind block i don't want any wind going up under those solar panels because if it does it's going to lift them out so the idea has always been to make that a completely enclosed uh, solar array. Need to cut one more piece down here and fit that in as well, just so I have a double wall situation there. So I think that's what I'm gonna do next. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna film, but uh, let's get into that. By the way, that is my access to the underside of the solar ray. So if I never ever need to get under there in the future, which I will, um, that is my, that is how I'll get in there. So, you know, I don't fasten it down with 10 bazillion screws or anything like that. At least that's the plan. So now I need to actually move the uh, scaffold and get up there because that piece you can probably see of uh, trim, we'll call it, has no way to be firmly screwed down. I need a backing 2x4, two 2x6 by two by up there underneath just beyond the top edge of the uh, final solar panel. So I've got to pull that off, fit in a piece, put it back down, screw it to the piece that I just fitted in, and that way it'll stay you know, secure in a windstorm. There's also a little hole in the corner up there where I didn't cut out and notch around a corner post. So I need to do that as well. Then I want to paint. I basically want to wrap up the solar ray. I've been messing with it and building on it for quite a long time. And while it's coming along and it's almost done, I'd really like to just finish it and be done with it so I can psychologically concentrate on this array number two. So uh, hopefully I can uh, do that and wrap it up here in the next two hours.
You know, I'm pretty stiff and sore from yesterday. So just doing that, getting up on a scaffold, climbing up and uh, taking that off, climbing back down. I'm definitely feeling it in my legs and my back and that just takes some work. Anyway, I got to cut something 65 inches wide. So I'm gonna go in the workshop here, cut a board for it on the chop saw, bring it back out and uh, mount it. It is nice to have power in here though, so all I have to do is plug in the chop saw. I don't have to run any extension cords or anything like that. That's, that's a nice change. Uh, I'm beginning to hate my jigsaw. Almost everything I do with it now has horrible freaking tear out. So I may have to just stop using it. Hey guys, so welcome back. It's the end of a three day weekend. I did not film all that much today because I did something that was difficult to film, which is